I just wanted to mention um, for folks on the board to take a look at the draft questionnaire. Drop a call and join from the email. Okay. Um, yeah, let's. Uh, um, yeah, that, that's an appropriate thing to uh, to say in board comments. Um, uh, anyone else? Uh, Lindy, Bonnie, Jamie. I do not. Um, so, uh, uh, times and a timekeeper. Carl, sorry, sorry, I, I was muted. Um, uh, are we doing an executive session tonight? Does it say join now in the file? No. Uh, we are not. I, put out, I put out an email that I thought we should to talk about the real estate no. dealings. Can you hear the other if we don't have time for that, we, we, we need to talk in a fairly timely matter about some of the um, uh, updates as I talk to Pat. Okay. Um, yeah, we have yeah, two things going on. Uh, uh, can we uh, add to the agenda an executive oh, session? Well, I have two meetings. I, 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 I don't, I, I, I don't think everyone. it will be long. Wait, are you ready? But I, I, I don't think it'll be long. Yeah, I just, fine. Let's do it at the end, and then we'll jump into the info. So are we ready? To right. Thank you. Right. And if we have to, if we can't get to it, we can always um, do it after the info. Uh, table, table the regular meeting to to uh, adjourn to a time certain, and then come back and finish the executive session after the info after that the info be, meeting. Yeah, that'd be okay. fine with me. I just, it's a, I just want to keep people posted, and there's some priorities to talk about. Okay. Um, that is certainly fine. So let's add, let's add, um, after, uh, uh, item uh, nine, let's add an item 10 executive session to, 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 to discuss, uh, uh, real estate transactions, uh, the, the public disclosure of which, uh, could hurt the board's position. Okay. Um, uh, assign times and timekeeper. We have three minutes. We, we, we should be very mindful of the fact that we do um, have, I, I would very much like us to get through our regular business um, before we get into the informational meeting. Um, I, I think that if we had to co-mingle public comment on both the content of the information uh, of the regular meeting and the informational meeting, that would be okay. I'm not as concerned that we have um, completely discreet public comment, but I really think we should, should the only piece that I, I, I would say that I would want us to um, consider would be if we could move um, 7.3, the uh, COVID task force uh, update to the end of the list, knowing that uh, that that would be certainly an appropriate thing to add to the, to, to, to the, to the contents of the public uh, informational meeting, because all our public is hopefully going to be at that meeting. And uh, that, that is re reporting that sort of thing out then, I think would be just as appropriate as, as trying to get to it now. So let's uh, uh, move that to the end. But that said, um, times and timekeeper, five minutes for the consent agenda. Um, uh, reports to the board. Lindy, uh, Lindy anything to add beyond what you published? Nope, we're just gonna ask if there's any questions, so. Okay. Uh, beautiful. Is Tara in the same boat? Same. Tara will have a couple quick comments, and that's it. Yep. Okay. Um, all right. So let's give uh, all of all of reports to the board. Can let's can we try to get that done in ten minutes? Easy. Um, discussion items, labor negotiations. I have an update on that. I think that's going to take five at, at the most. Um, discussing the uh, interim board uh, member and how that uh, procedure goes, I think that is probably about a 10 to 15 minute discussion. Um, school building maintenance and next steps. Um, let's put 10 minutes on that. Um, new hires, is that just a five minute report or is there actually we need That's to tell not even anything to report, it's just a placeholder. Okay, beautiful. Um, all right, then I think we've got- What about seven What's that? Carl, what about 7.3? 7 7.3, um, do not assign the time for Right, let's, let's put 10 minutes on that and know that we can bump that into the public informational because that's really, I think, more of a, of a public informational okay. than the board. I don't believe, as I understand it, you guys aren't going to ask us to take action, correct? That's okay. Correct. You're going to report out, tell us how it's going to be come September 9th. Okay. Um, Great. I agree. I'm sorry. I missed that part when you were talking about my phone right here. Um, I can be the timekeeper if you'd like. Okay. That'd be cool. Thank you. 
the uh, minutes for the uh, three listed meetings, uh, June 2nd, June 16th, and June 23rd. So, Carl, um, we approved those. Um, I got the minutes. Uh, yes. We got it's those the, approved on July 7th, but we will be needing to approve the minutes from July 7th, 14th, and 21st. Exactly. I was about to just say that because I flipped over from my my uh, uh, agenda screen to my uh, screen where I had your your meeting notes up, and I'm like, oh, those are July minutes. Yes, Carl, this is August. So uh, 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 we we are going to entertain the the three sets of uh, open draft minutes that are the seven 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 fourteen and seven twenty one minutes that are in uh, Jenny's uh, email from Friday. And does that anyone have any comments? I don't think we can do I'm that sorry, because they're not on the agenda, Carl. Carl. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I don't know why that type will happen. I apologize. No worries. Let's uh, let us uh, let the minutes reflect that, or I, I would entertain a, uh, a motion to table approving uh, the 7-7, 7-14, and 7-21 minutes until such time as they can be appropriately listed on an agenda. So moved. So here a second. Thank you. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, anyone opposed? All right. Um, so we will uh, we will table the uh, consent agenda, and we will move into uh, board comments. Does anyone have any questions uh, uh, for Jamie and his report? Um, oh, can I just do a quick board comment? Absolutely, I'm here. Yep. Um, yeah, just one update about uh, the tents. Uh, tents are in place, three in Stockbridge, six in Rochester. Um, we have the buckets are over at Carrera uh, Cement in Middlebury where they're getting filled for free. Um, uh, these are the ballasts and the ratcheter um, should be arriving tomorrow at Rochester Hardware so that all this can be set up and be in use uh, before the beginning of school. Complete. Well, <laughs> that is really, really awesome. And it's, I would have to say though, Ethan, it is 95% complete. The last 5% is when, when this whole thing gets up, we really need, need to take some great pictures of that and get them to Martha Harold, or Martha uh, Slater Red Harold and get them posted you know, on our website and get that and, and, and get that out there because I think the more that we can show that we're not scrambling, that we're being thoughtful, we're being timely, and we're being appropriate, uh, we're comfortable to our parents. So thank you, and, and, and thank you, Lindy and uh, Ethan, and thank you, Lindy and, and, and Bonnie, for, for getting together and let's make sure that we get it out there once we all uh, and we should just add that each campus has the same number of total tents. We just already had some in Stockbridge that we're able to reuse for this outdoor education purpose. So everybody has the same number of outdoor spaces to meet the need. I just want to clarify that. We had to order some more. But. Excellent. Excellent. But these are, these are, I mean, from what I understand from Tara's comments, these are, are COVID CARES money eligible, right? So, you know, and Given, the, given the, the the age of our kids, expect them even if we had the indoor space, expect them to stay inside and be masked for that much time. I had little kids. <laughs> okay. Um, any other board comment? Um, quick comment just on the the questionnaire that we're going to be doing. I sent a draft out to the board and. Um, Lindy and Bonnie and Jamie, uh, if you can get me, if possible, comments before Friday so that we can get that um, ready to have for Tuesday, that would be great, or earlier if possible, so I can send it around to people before, um, so that people get a chance to see the final survey. Right. No, I think that's, I, I, I would love us to be able to get that out by end of day Friday. So I know I'm a big pro pro procrastinator, and I'll I'll commit to getting my comments to you to you by then, if you know if we can all do that, and then Jenny, you can just just get it out there. I think that's important. Okay. Uh, any other board comments? All right. Um, 
Uh, reports to the board. The superintendent's report is in our email. It went. Um, does anyone have any questions or comments for Jamie? <laughs> As I try to find his letter. And I'll certainly expand on some things when we get to some of the discussion items. But uh, there it is, Superintendent Report. I was I was searching under your name. It's under it's under Christie's uh, from Thursday, July thirtieth. Ah, Ray, you are excellent. Thank you for being there. Um, does anyone have any questions or comments? Okay. Hold on, I was just looking for my unmute button. Um, sure. So, due to the fact that we are, um, right, just virtually now, is there a, a place that the public can go and read these reports? They because are, they are great. In the folders on the in your guys's board info, right where people find okay. the agendas. These are also linked in there. Okay, that's great because I, I think there's wonderful information in it, and the public would. It'd be great for the public to be able to read them as well. Yeah, no, I agree, Amy. Thank you for mentioning that. Um, one comment, actually, that, that uh, Amy just um, prompted me to make, which is that if you if uh, everyone looks in their uh, in their email, the uh, Vermont School Boards Association has sent around their their latest report, and they actually uh, addressed a comment that Ethan brought up at our last meeting about uh, getting back together and, and meeting in person. And uh, it references the, uh, uh, the, the, the governor's 623 guidance that still says that basically unnecessary meetings um, in uh, unnecessary public meetings should not be should not be held. Uh, it, it raises the question of even if we could say segment off the gym, it still would necessarily be potentially limiting the number of people that could attend because if you said, okay, the first 20 could come if we had, a crowd that was interested in talking about our building issues or something like that, we would be be basically only able to to, to seat the, the the first twenty that showed up and then send people away. Um, so the guidance from the, the the state and the Vermont School Boards Association is for the near the near future, um, and by that they said they they suggested it into October. The idea that public meetings we could gather as a body if there were things that we wanted to uh, discuss in person. It, uh, in person, we could gather as a uh, we could gather as a body and record it, and and uh, um, you know provide virtual access to the public for that. But the guidance from the state and from the Vermont School Boards Association at this point is that um, school board meetings should be held uh, uh, virtually or perhaps in person by just the school board members, but televised to the public virtually. So I wanted to make sure that got put in the hey, record. Carl, I'll just add, when I brought that up to the SU board early in July and said that if board members would like, there are procedures and safety protocols in place, and it would make sense if the board needed to attend in person to do it here at the SU office because the technology is set up such that I feel comfortable that we can ensure that the public could attend that way. Excellent. Plus, we wouldn't want to I'm sorry. We plus we will. Well, the the to our buildings is going to be very limited, and we wouldn't to put, have a, a a lot of extra public, including ourselves, um, accessing uh, our school buildings. It's yeah, the public, so the SU gives a very good option. Right. The, the 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 idea is parents are not parents are not to enter school buildings. Um, unnecessary personnel, if possible, aren't supposed to be at, at, at school buildings. Um, so if, for example, we had um, the business office was occupying spare rooms at, at, Royalton, uh, at Royalton High School, for example, just to pull an example out of the air, they would be told don't work there because, you know, you're, 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 you're an infection vector for the kids. Um, so, you know, the... I mean, and, and like, while the, the grounds can be accessed by parents, parents can't even come inside to use restrooms. So there, 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 there is some really pretty strict guidelines about keeping the, the, the school population of students and the, 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 the core teachers and the core staff members segregated from the bigger populations of parents and PTO and uh, uh, things like that. 
But I think I think we'll cover a lot more of that in in uh, the uh, COVID nineteen report. You appear to still be on the video. Yep. Um, does anyone have any uh, further questions for the superintendent or, or comments about his report? Okay. Um, we also got a report from uh, from Bonnie and Lindy that I figure out which tab that was. Um, is called pre I, it's we got a tab. We hopefully you all found it. We have a tab that has a, that has a principal report from them um, that uh, you know we can give them questions or, or, or comments about. Does anyone? Uh, have any feedback uh, around that? Or Bonnie and, and uh, Lindy, do you have anything you want to emphasize or pull out of that for us? It is linked in the agenda. To, uh, we just linked it in the chat, too, if you need to see it. Ah, beautiful. <laughs> that is very helpful. Thank you, Ray. Or, or, or thank you, uh, uh, Jamie, whichever, whichever one of you linked that. That was Ray. <laughs> um, OK. Anything else about the principal's report? Um, it's uh, 6.2, the Tara, Tara, the uh, business manager's report. Hello, everybody. Just wanted to give you an update as to the happenings in the business office. We are working through some restructuring in the business office, moving people around. Um, so we'll be updating the boards once we get a final plan together for all of that. And we have started working with the auditors. We had a three-hour call with them today on the FY20 pre-audit. So those are already in the works and well on their way. Can I say anything else? Nope. Jamie and I have met to develop the updated budget calendar for FY22. So that will be coming out probably later this month to all of you via email. And I can't think of much else right now. I encourage you to please mark the August 24th meeting in your calendar uh, for the SU because there will be an SU-wide uh, financial update in that meeting. And that's a reorganization meeting too. So there'll be two full SU board meetings this month. <laughs> yes, uh, yes. Um, thank you for that. Does anyone have any questions for Tara? Uh, okay, so uh, hearing none, uh, we've moved through the reports to the board. Uh, discussion items, um, labor negotiations. Um, as you all know, we are in uh, we are negotiating uh, contracts with both the professional staff, the teachers, and the uh, uh, support staff, um, the paraeducators, the uh, uh, general building workers, and such. Um, the uh, negotiations with the uh, support staff uh, are still open. There's some clarifying questions that they've asked of us. We've given them answers and we're waiting for their response. The uh, negotiations, uh, the open negotiations with the teachers, we can report have been closed. The, the uh, uh, board uh, has officially gone um, to impasse with the teachers, uh, with the teachers union, um, which means that um, their last best offer and our last best offer um, were too far apart. Um, we felt that there was no no uh, value in us negotiating uh, with each other independently. Uh, the way that this works by statute is that um, we now uh, get a mediator in and we've reached out to find a mediator. The mediator will look at our last best offer. Their last best offer will be um, probably in you know in, in this covid day we'll be in virtual breakout rooms and the mediator will jump between our zoom meeting or our uh, google meet and the the, the 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 union's google meet and you know get opinions and take temperatures and communicate things back and forth um once that happens if that's successful then we uh we uh, uh get a a tentative agreement that we bring back to the SU and to all the boards for a vote. Um, if that is not successful, and it, it, in my personal experience, and I've been doing this for 15 years, um, mediation has worked once. Um, but if, if that is not successful, you go to something called, something called fact-finding, 
which is where um, our, our we present uh, our argue we present our last best argument and our reasons why that's the position that should be and supported with data from comparables across the state and so on and so forth. The union and, and, and their representatives present their last best offer and the reason they think that should be with their comparables and their you know, supporting evidence as to why that that's the, the, that's, that's the fairer wage or the more equitable wage or the more equitable um, work hours or whatever the, the, the points of contention in the contract are. Um, and the fact finder then produces a decision. Um, people can accept it or not. Um, if they do not, there is a, a, uh, a required, um, another uh, mediated, usually mediated, but there's another meeting between uh, labor and management um, to have a last chance to try to resolve that. And if that, hap if, if that does not work, then management gets to impose a contract for one year and say, here's the work terms that you're going to work under for one year. And then the union gets to look at that and decide uh, whether or not they are going to strike. Um, I'm saying that to make sure because we have a lot of people on the call and a lot of people that wonder about how that all works. And I'm, I'm saying that to step through the process. That said, um, mediation, I believe we're the, the, the last I heard, we're looking at a fed, uh, there, there's federal mediators that are provided uh, that are provided by the government that uh, are, are trained in this and they work through these matters at no cost to either us or to the teachers and you know, it, it, it's 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 a worthwhile conversation, and it's part of a process. And you know, I I began or earlier I said that in my in my 15 years I've never seen a I've only seen one mediation work. I've seen zero strikes. So you know, this is not to, to say that we've come to impasse. Just means that we've moved into in, into the next stage of of negotiations. Um, it's just you know, this is. Labor negotiations at the beginning of the cycle, there are uh, uh, rules of, of how negotiations will proceed that are set up. And one of the general things that happens is that there's an overall, it's all done in kind of private in, in, in an executive session um, by, by agreement of both sides. And you can only really have a formal report out when a formal event happens like going to impasse. So this is not to say you know, doom and gloom or something that's happening. It's to say we've reached the formal step where we've said that that the two sides uh, on their own don't think they can get any closer. We're going to bring into some we're going to bring in someone to help us try to get us to that place and to narrow and to narrow the conversation down and, and, and to move things forward. Carl, um, Carl, the way the finances work. I'm sorry. Oh, just yes. Uh, um, oh, I imagine you probably can't give us any details of uh, the issues at hand or like if it involves COVID or anything like that. That's all um, executive privilege information. Yeah, I don't want to go into any. Uh, uh, correct. OK, just curious. Thank you. Correct. Correct. That was my assumption. We can certainly um, we can certainly. Uh, be an executive you can certainly have an executive session where i can i can tell you what the what the issues are it'll add about three minutes to the conversation so why don't we do that or and if we can't do that now because we already passed the adjustments to the agenda portion um we can uh, we can do it at our next meeting or i can i can send it to you i can send i can yeah. well, we why don't i do this i'll have yeah. dina send us a little a little summary under attorney client privilege email we also have an SU meeting Monday. Oh, okay. So you, yeah, was that okay, Ethan? Okay. Anything else on that? Your five minutes is. Up. Is that okay, Ethan, or do you want to? I think he gave a thumbs up. I was. I was oh, okay. No, that is all. I I vigorously that is all I had to say about later. I'm muting myself. Sorry. I'm muting. Excellent. Thank you, Ethan. Um, 7.2 interim board member. Um, recall that our regular meeting, Janie resigned. We did not immediately put that on, on the uh, uh, August 11th ballot because the candidates would have, would have had 36 hours to get onto that ballot appropriately. And we didn't think that was, that was right. 
What we need to decide now, and we started, I, I sent around a document that you started filling in some interview questions, but what we need to decide formally tonight is do we want to, and we could do the same thing we did with the um, uh, revote of the budget on, on the primary night, we could simply warn at our September meeting um, that we were going to elect the, the interim school board replacement on the November meeting um, ballot and just put piggyback a, a, another paper ballot onto the regular presidential election. I've checked with Dina. We don't have to go or do anything with the Secretary of State to do that. But what it means is that we'd be finding an interim person um, to only influence board decisions between now and November versus through a whole budget cycle, which, you know, given, given the way our budgets have been is something that we might want to consider. Um, we also have to consider how the interview process would work in the past, at least in Stockbridge, we've, we've started a document like I've, I've sent around to you guys already where we've developed the same, you know, eight to 10 questions to ask everyone to respond to. And we figured out which one of them, which one of us asks those same questions, you know, so that we're giving the same, you know, consistent interview experience. And then the board gathers and, and uh, here's the report of the interview committee, whether it's a committee or the whole board in Stockbridge, it always had to be the whole board because otherwise it wasn't a quorumed meeting. The remaining two members had to be there. Otherwise it didn't count, but we could, we could conceivably do it with, uh, you know, four of the five of us, and then and then report out to the to the fifth to have a vote, or we could just decide it was a a whole board decision. But we need to put a procedure together. We've had um, I want to say four people at this point, four or five that have expressed interest, mm -hmm. and I would like to get back to them and set up the interviews and 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 get this resolved. So it means we need to decide. Um, what our procedure is going to be, and what the what this inter, what this interim term is going to be? Thoughts? Well, I'll just jump in. I mean, it, this is your decision, but as your superintendent, I would recommend that we have an election coming up in November that you strongly consider appointing someone now, and then having an election of the people in November. Um, in regards to deciding who's going to fill this position for the remainder of the term. Because there's going to be a lot of decisions to be made in regards to the upcoming budget. And we're going to look to get you the SU to adopt a policy on budgeting that says that it is actually a policy statement. And really try to engage the board and community in a deeper level dive around our budget process. So, Carl, I'm glad you talked about the idea of the budget. And having someone who's been elected by the people to be part of that process. I think that that's a good perspective to keep in mind. I, I agree. I think, I think it was made clear by several comments uh, by others that um, they felt that uh, Stockbridge needed to be fully represented on the board as soon as possible. And that uh, um, we fill that position with an interim and then, yeah, a proper election, I think, would uh, give us um, uh, support going forward. So either either way, though, we would uh, do interviews at this point to elect a temporary interim till November. Whoops, sorry, I, I You're muted muted. Um, <laughs> now I'm unmuted. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, in, at least in Stockbridge, that's been that's been our past practice. Is that we've had? I mean, there have been there have been times when someone has left um, in January because of a job change, and we've had we know we've we've had a May a May thing, and they've recruited a person to replace them. Um, but that was also you know that, that that was also when it was a much sleepier board. Um, when it's been when it's been a board where there's been um, you know some some differing points of view that have come forward, we have had an interview and we've we've tried to do it. You know, again, we we've, we've said we have to ask you know a common questions. We have to we have to um, you know treat it like we treat interviewing a teacher or interviewing a principal. 
where it can't just be, you know, it, it, it just can't just be an open-ended chit chat where we find someone that 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 that, right. that, 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 that you know, just thinks the way we do. So you know, having 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 similar questions, having a formal sit down, you know, a, a formal sit down interview, you know, I think. Janie and Jenny both were, you guys were both interviewed. Well, Janie's not here anymore. <laughs> That's why we're having this conversation. Jenny, you were formally interviewed, weren't you? I was not interviewed, but I know Janie was. If I Because I don't think there was anyone else okay. that had expressed interest at the time when I was on. Okay. So I think it's also I important to make sure. That. Okay. I think it's also important to make sure that the interim also ha the interim has to be a Stockbridge resident. You know, we're we're just we're just appointing a Stockbridge person versus uh, electing a Stockbridge person. So then I would entertain a motion that um, we well no we'll, we'll warn that in September after we've after we've gone through the interviews. But then that's going to be what you know. So we're gonna we're we're going to move forward um, with an interview process that we're going to develop the questions for, and we're to let's reach out to these people. Who wants to do interviews with me? You want to do the whole board or try to at least assume the whole board would try to make it? Yes, I think. Yeah, I think as many of us that are yeah. interested. Yes. Okay. So we won't we won't try to force us all to be there, but and just so I have it right, it's the board's consensus oh. then that we would move in separate. We would move into we would move into interviews. The board would move into the interview process, develop the questions, and move into the interview process. And I would like the board to have this ready to make a recommendation at our next meeting. Absolutely. You know, with that person, with that person having been been informed and okay. you know particip participating, you know, at least de facto, if not de jure. I mean, technically, after you're appointed, you're supposed to go get sworn in by by your town. But I think you know having that person join us at that meeting. And, Offer comments as if they're in the board. The board can allow people to speak at our at our discretion, and you know, while they would not quote have a formal vote, we make consent. Our, our most of our decisions are consensus based, anyways. So, but I would like us, you know, and I'm, I'm trying to avoid us having. We already have two SU meetings in August. I was try. I was trying. To, I would like us try to to avoid having a special vote, a special meeting to appoint the the the, the representative before our our. Uh, our uh, uh, September meeting. Yep. And then I agree that. Okay. Although we actually, I suppose we should. I would agree. With, we should and with these, and that we should go ahead and um. Uh, put a put a formal vote to the, to the uh, town residents on November eleventh to elect um, at that point the the board member okay is that a, we need a is that a, a is that a motion in a second i'm hearing uh yes i'm seconding what amy just said beautiful um all right a motion has been made and seconded that the uh board warn a uh a, a formal election for the uh replacement stockbridge board member on november 11th at their september at their september regular meeting Guys, the election date is November 3rd. So what we're doing is committing to... <laughs> Just throwing it out there if you're doing it. Election I'm day is November Oh, no, no. It, that's me. It's, August 11th is the It is November 3rd, and it's August 3rd. No, Lindy, that's, that's, Lindy, that's, that's the that's first election. That's where I'm election. conflating the date. The second date. election I'm is sorry. the 11th. There's going to be so Lindy. 11-3. <laughs> okay. It's important for a but lot so of people. We, so we've got a motion on the floor. We've got a motion on the floor that the board is going to proceed to warn a formal uh, a, a board member election at our September meeting. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries uh, uh, unanimously. To clarify, just because I, I saw what looked like a confused look, we can't, I mean, if we were going to hold the meet, if we were going to actually formally warn the election today, we'd have to be able to say where the election was going to happen and what time it was going to happen and all that. 
And what we just, all we've done now is we've committed to, to piggybacking. You know, we, we formally moved that we're going to have a board member election on the 11-3 national election date without putting that formal warning of when the election time is and what the actual question um, uh, would be. We can still get the actual question and the actual warning from Dina and have that ready for our September meeting. All we've done is that we've, we've said that we're going forward with that process. And I know roll, rules of order and Claire and see Patty Harvey looking at me. <laughs> I would assume that a uh, Stockbridge resident would get on the ballot in, um, for the November election. And there's a whole process that they can do Correct. to get they on have, the ballot. Okay. We can discuss that in Correct. They have to, they have to time, submit a, uh, a petition. Yeah, okay. right. It's the same, it's the same process. Megan and I had to go through. There's yeah. a, there's there's a good sized window. You, you have to do it 20 days before the election. So if we set this up in September, they've got all of September and October to do it. It was just that when yeah. we were trying to think about it at our, at our July meeting, it, there there really point. wasn't a, a, a fair time window to get it in before the August meeting. Great. So my okay. My so let me. I will try to get the agenda back up. I keep track of the time my time has died, meaning my phone, but I will still try to keep track of, <laughs> of uh, timekeeping. Okay, so, so what we have left is let me, Okay, let's go into school building maintenance next steps, please. So I put this on there because the board had. Um, directed the administration to start working on the high school building and what the closure would look like for uh, the use of st the school and students this coming school year. I uh, had Lyle Smith come down. He's the maintenance director up in Williston schools. And he w I was referred to Lyle by Norm. I can't think of Norm's uh, name. He's a consultant through Visbet. And Lyle came down and did a walkthrough with Bonnie and I uh, yesterday. And um, he's putting together a report of steps we need to take. A few things right offhand is that there are some things in regards to our second boiler that we're concerning that we need to take a look at. Um, in the high school, that has, that's separate from the actual closure of the high school building. That is something we just need to take care of, period. Um, it's clear that the temperature, the lowest the temperature can get is going to be 55 degrees due to the mechanics of the boilers being in the high school building and um, the sprinkler system. In addition, he felt the need for us to pursue some heat sensors throughout the building because he said the fact that we're going to keep it at 55 in the event that um, something happened to our boilers we wouldn't have a great deal of time to address it before we would need to get um, a temporary heater in there so that the building doesn't freeze up. So he recommended that. And um, he said the one thing that's good is that the folks we've been working with for the heat system really are top notch. And he said that they are definitely the service organization we can, should continue to work with. Um, he also said that we need to have someone go through that building daily, which we do already anyways, um, on staff just to ensure that the boilers are up and operating appropriately. Um, and so those were the recommendations he made. Uh, we'll look to get you a further report once it's provided to me. We've got three top-notch guys working on it, um, free of charge, by the way. Bisbet's taking really good care of us and supporting us with this endeavor. So um, a huge shout out to Lyle. I am greatly appreciative that he came down and spent a few hours with us yesterday. So those are all the reports um, that I have at this time. And in September, I'll tell you what steps we're, we're gonna take. He did think we could find some efficiencies though. Okay. Jamie, was there any discussion about the, oh, just uh, Jamie, was there any discussion uh, about him with, about the oil there tank? There was discussion with him about the oil tank. That we need to get it, that he felt like we need to do some more digging into that in regards to addressing it. Good, thank you. 
Does anyone else have any questions uh, for Jamie on the uh, uh, next steps uh, in, in building maintenance? Uh, just to, um, sorry, the question went out of my head. Uh, do we need to take any action at this time about this as far as instructing our, um, our administrators? Um, obviously, we cut numbers from the budget for fuel economies, things like that. I don't know if we cut um, anything for salaries for the maintenance because we were hopeful that we were not going to have anybody in there. No, nope. um, is nope. that that's not part of the budget. OK, OK, thank you. Just clarification. Um, the only other thing I'll add is I did do a walkthrough at the elementary school today, both your elementary schools. Um, and I'm going to provide some feedback uh, to your lead custodians and principals about just, you know, a second set of eyes. Um, I'm, I'm touring all the buildings this upcoming week with the lead custodians um, just to, to get a sense of the lay of the land and where we're at in regards to maintenance and facilities across the SU. Excellent. Thank you, Jamie. Um, all right, that that leaves really only the uh, uh, COVID uh, task force updates. We can get. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry, sorry, uh, Carl. Um, I'm not sure if this was Jamie. Is this the area where we want to talk about um, ventilation improvements? Oh yeah. Uh, well, I was going to do that under COVID, but oh, you were yeah. okay. Great, great. Thank you. So I excellent. Well, Jamie, nice segue. Out, um, well, I just want to point out that we have 15 minutes left of this regular meeting. We had discussed a possible executive session and the possibility of pushing this COVID into the next meeting. I just wanted to point out that we have 15 minutes left. So you can decide what you want to do. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Timekeeper. <laughs> I, I would suggest um, do we, if the board, if the board has no problem, I would suggest moving the executive session to after the informational. I don't think it'll be long, but I just think it's, um, I, I hate to rush it. Okay, that's the valid point. And I would rather, uh, I, I would rather have a chance to uh, get more water and, and uh, uh, you know, visit the little board members room or whatever between these two seconds. So let's go into the COVID task force update and we'll put the uh, executive session into uh, uh, after the informational meeting. Um, and yeah, in your information, I mean, it is a warm meeting, so you can definitely do that. Um, so the COVID-19 uh, updates are that uh, the admin team has been working diligently um, in regard and working with teachers and the COVID task force to get as much information out as we can. So I wanted to kind of chunk it up in a few sections. One, the instructional schedules for the SU were shared yesterday for both in-person and virtual K through 12. Um, the K through eight schedules across the SU, um, the principals all worked together in regards to implementing a schedule that provided instruction from eight to three, but also provided the opportunity for families if they chose to pick up students at 1.30. Um, all of these decisions are made based on surveys that we were able to put in place so essentially we try to provide as much flexibility as we could for in-person instruction five days a week we're going to utilize outdoor learning spaces as much as possible um, to provide students with an opportunity to social distance appropriately outdoors um, we've also gone through our classrooms to ensure that students can safely social distance in our classrooms in the event that we need to move inside and we're taking steps to ensure that that's taken care of. I've been, I actually took advantage of working with Lyle Smith to find out what type of cleaning supplies they're using up in the Williston uh, district. And we're gonna look to pilot that in some of our schools. Um, it's a pretty reasonable cost and it's been very effective up there. If you remember, Williston was the first school district that shut down this spring due to a confirmed case of a member of, of their um, supervisory union. So they kind of were able to do the guinea pigs and test what it looked like to go into a school and clean 
in the event that someone did test positive. Um, so I took advantage of a car ride over the mountain with Lyle to talk to him about that. Uh, transportation, we met with the transportation company last week. We are moving forward to provide transportation. Surveys went out about that. Um, we're strongly encouraging families to drop students off if possible. Um, there will be a health assessment that will be virtual that families have to complete daily prior to students boarding the bus. Schools are working to create handbooks for families about exactly what all the procedures look like at the building level because we're trying to use multiple entrances um, across the SU to bring students in to try to have health checks be um, timely and speedy. The virtual learning platform is still Google, but that schedule looks significantly different than it did last year. Um, students will be engaged in instruction throughout the day and regular check-ins check with faculty. We've approached it from an SU level in regards to faculty will be assigned to virtual learning, um, specifically if faculty um, meet the criteria to be COVID exempt. We're gonna prioritize those faculty first to teach in the virtual learning academy. And your principal, Lindy Stetson, is going to be the principal that oversees the virtual learning academy so that we have continuity across the SU in regards to ensuring that accountability is the same um, school to school. I'm unbelievably proud of how you, the principals across the SU have come together. Um, the fact that we have a unified schedule for in-person instruction and agreed upon a uh, schedule for virtual learning was terrific. Um, and we also, uh, Shane Oates is um, the COVID-19 coordinator. He was the MTS coordinator at Rudd. He has taken a leadership role in assisting us to ensure all the nurses have met across the SU. And uh, he's meeting with all principals and head of maintenance to ensure all proper safety checks are in place around cleaning. Um, and we're also looking to do PPE across the SU. Um, the pre-K teachers met um, today in information around what the pre-K schedule is gonna look like for in-person instruction, as well as a survey to see if families are interested in a virtual learning opportunity for pre-K, that's coming out tomorrow. Uh, on Monday night, I'll be ready to share with the SU board a revised calendar of what in-service time will look like for faculty and staff. I've been working with the union on that. Um, I gotta say our union has been great about meeting with me regularly to ensure that we're all on the same page, to ensure a safe opening and return to school. Um, and thus far, the feedback I've been receiving has been um, fairly positive in regards to folks understanding that we're trying to mitigate risk, ensure equity for all students in, in regards to education. Um, and one of the things out there is I am going to talk to the SU board on Monday night about the possibility of us addressing the fact that some of our staff are challenged in regards to childcare and some of the surrounding SUs not being in person five days a week and how we might be able to navigate that. So I'm gonna share a plan on, with the SU board on that on Monday night and look for you guys to um, possibly adopt an idea that I have and the admin team has around how we could address childcare for our faculty and staff. Lindy, did I miss anything else? I just wanna clarify, Jamie, that- You're uh, muted, my friend. Am I unmuted now? Okay, yeah. sorry. Um, I just wanted to clarify that that 1.30 to 3 time for in-person learning uh, daily, five days a week, is going to be in coordination with our One Planet program to offer extra enrichment opportunities for students, more hands-on learning. It could look a lot of different ways depending on numbers, um, just because I know there's some parents out there listening. But in terms of like reading and math instruction, that will happen prior to the 1.30 time daily. So I just want to make there that. There intervention that happens from 1.30 to 3. Right. That might be the only difference depending on scheduling once we have numbers and things like that. But other than that, I think, I think you covered it all. Can't think of anything else. We well, are working to best... Um, utilize our CARES money um, 
And so there's not enough. I just think that the boards need to know that. And I'll share that with the SU board Monday night. I don't suspect that there's going to be enough with all the expenses we incur. Um, the other thing we are looking to do is utilize care money to put in place some regular daily floating subs um, across the SU that are trained in how we're approaching this and have experience around the routines. Because what I don't want is, is us just bringing folks in and having them not experience what school looks like now in these unprecedented times. So we're trying to build a bench that's with us on a regular basis. Hi, Jamie, I was actually gonna ask you a question specifically about subs, because my concern was that, you know, looking, looking at the school year going forward, you know, if, if you're trying to get them on the ad hoc basis and being the first person that called that you know that, that calls the sub on the, the 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 Tuesday morning or whatever. I was going to suggest that we may, we maybe think about having, you know, saying that we need to have a you know X number on quote retainer so to speak, and and have them flexible enough to rotate around. And it sounds like you're on top of that, so that's great. No, yeah, that's exactly what we're going to do, Carl. Same with some nurses. Right. You know, we're gonna, just... we'll get a, like a member uh, MOU that they understand they can come every day. And that we're, you know, this is the rate we pay them, and then that will be tied directly back to our CARES money because it's a new expense, so it's permissible. So that's how we're going to approach it. So I just wanted to say to Lindy and Bonnie and you, James, it is. Um, I'm very impressed. Thank you. And we're going to continue to gain, you know, gather feedback. And, you know, what I've said to the admin team is this is a really solid plan, I think, for our first um, trimester. And we'll look to adjust if things aren't working. Um, I don't think that this is set in stone forever by any means. But it's definitely, if it works, then we're going to stick with it. If folks aren't happy with how it's going and we need to adjust, then we'll adjust. Excellent. Uh, thank you, Jamie. Thank you, Lindy. And Lindy, I'm, 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 I'm really hoping you're stepping up to be the principal of the virtual academy and not being strong armed into being the principal of the virtual academy. But I, 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 I am. I volunteer. Excellent. So I, I think it's, it, it could have been. <laughs> um, question. I look forward to making you, you make a place for me as you uh, know how good you are. Um, uh, just a thank you. Quick question. Um, uh, I was out of the room for a minute. I had to check on a child. Um, uh, is this include at all um, upgrading ventilation systems in school? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I missed that part. So we've been working with Efficiency Vermont. Um, there was a grant that went statewide. They prioritized us based on just knowledge that they knew about our current not tending necessarily to always proactive um, maintenance. And so Efficiency Vermont has been in all of our schools at this point, except for one. I know there's still one on the list. They are providing us recommendations. It looks like we're gonna get some significant funds from Efficiency Vermont to ensure that all of our systems are up to snuff before September 8th. Wow, great. That is a major concern. Um, Certainly, some of that work has already started in certain buildings. So yeah, I'm feeling confident that that will all be taken care of. Cleaned, changed out parts that need to be changed out, and all new filtering. What What about the actual, I mean, I, I, we've been told that the elementary, Rochester Elementary boiler is, um, is, you know, sketchy and could go at any time, I think is a term that was used at some point. Is that not what you're well, based on my based on the information I'm operating off of? One boiler is really solid. Okay. And there's a backup boiler that needs some servicing that we think we can get repaired. Excellent. Okay. I think that the boiler situation, Lyle felt pretty comfortable that we can get that in a good place. Great. That's good to hear. That's very good to hear. Thank you, Jamie. Okay. Does anyone have any, uh, any comments uh, uh, around the COVID uh, task force school reopening uh, efforts? 
Um, Hearing none, it is six. Oh, is it time? Um, uh, and maybe it's, six, it's six fifty-seven. I'm, yeah, no, the, 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 this maybe ahead. can be addressed another time. I just want to bring it up. There has been obviously a lot of discussion about homeschooling um, as opposed to virtual. Um, uh, people take them out of the out of the program and 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 doing it for themselves. Um, I just don't. Um, I, I don't know. We probably should talk about this because obviously, well, there's aspects of it affecting the numbers certainly of our daily count. Um, but uh, I don't know, I just, I'm, I, I wanna raise the, the flag because I'm certainly hearing about it. Yeah, Ethan, I, mean, I think that, you know, that's not just us. I think that that's across the state and the secretary actually addressed it saying that they're gonna look for the legislature to take up how ADM's calculated this upcoming year, potentially. Because okay. he is concerned about it across the state. Yeah, great. Cause I, 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 I want we I think we we want to be as flexible as possible and that includes homeschool if people really feel that's the best way to go and I would hate to feel like we're penalizing anybody for that choice. As I understand it, Jamie, correct me if I'm wrong, but don't we have we do not have a a hybrid learning option in place. What we have is we have a, a five day a week option and then we have a completely virtual option. That's that virtual academy that Lindy's running. So we, we, we are offering families an alternative to formally signing up for homeschooling, correct? There's not a mixed option right now. I, I, we don't feel we have the staff to provide a third option at the moment. Mm -hmm. Right, but Lindy's, Lindy's Virtual Academy is going to have kids be 100% virtual while they're not being formal homeschool students. They'll be still... There'll be still our RSUD students that are at the virtual academy or, or, or Stratford students that are at the virtual academy, right. correct? Yeah, that's why we chose to go parents based on staff, Carl, thank you, is that we felt like if we were to do in-person and then go hybrid, like both, we would lose more students than saying we could provide right. a full virtual learning option for families. And I hope that families that are considering to do homeschool strongly consider reaching out to us and talking to Lindy, because I think their experience in the spring is not what it's gonna look like this upcoming year. I think we're gonna have, we have staff completely devoted just to virtual learning. I think that's, I think, I think that's very important. That, that bit of information right there is very important to make public um, but through the Herald, Sorry, I, through whatever. I agree. I think that we need to get this out there to families that, that so yeah, Jamie, if you put together some sort of, or Jamie and Lindy, some sort of like primer kind of, you know, FAQ, here's what you can do if you don't want your kids to go to school and you live in this area, here's so, how you go to the, 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 the White River Valley Virtual Academy. I am going to, you know, we can put it out again in a different way on Facebook, but I'm going to say I've already gotten inquiries from families SU wide since the information went out yesterday asking clarifying questions and things like that so if there's families that were already enrolled in rochester or stockbridge that have questions my name's out there as a person to contact and families have already contacted and asked questions and i know bonnie and i have also encouraged families as always we have an open door policy to call us and ask those questions and we can walk through you know homeschool versus virtual learning versus uh, i did interview learning. with the herald today Half, half an hour for the Herald today, so I think you'll see a pretty big um, story on Thursday. Good. Thank you all. It is 701. So I, I, I would motion to adjourn this meeting. We will have the public comment for this meeting at the end of the informational meeting, and we'll just we'll, so we'll, we'll co-mingle that rather than trying to to to. Are we adjourning? Second. In this Are meeting, we adjourning or postponing? I think we're postponing, Carl, because we're coming back for executive session. Uh, yes, or we could add executive set. It's a warned meeting for the seven o'clock meeting, so we can add an executive session and the adjustments right. to the agenda to that meeting. Okay, great. Did we need to go over the new hires now, or do we do that later? There's nothing on um, new hires. That was a place not new hires at this time. Okay. Good. So, All right. So, so I would entertain uh, a motion to 
adjourn. Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Aye. Uh, let's adjourn this meeting. The Rochester Stockbridge Unified School District Board um, and the Rochester Select Board, Town Select Board, are determining the price tag for their assigned tasks to, to move forward with the proposed transfer. Once the price tags have been determined, a timeline for moving forward can be set. Thank you, Ethan, for the board's comment. Um, the board has no further comment, no, nor any other action to take. So the board would entertain a motion to uh, adjourn. Thank you all. So moved. Do I have second. a second? A motion has been made and seconded that the board adjourn this special informational meeting that at least I will editorialize for one quick second. I thought went very, very well. Thank yes, you all. Congratulations, Carl. Um, hopefully uh, we will see success uh, on the 11th. Thank you, everybody. Our next regular meeting is scheduled for September 1st. It will be met, it will be met in the internet. Good night, Tammy. Bye-bye. Or Tara. I don't know why. Farewell. Bye-bye. Farewell.